and he says it's the most formative and developmental time in his career. Join me today on Walk With History as we tour Aldeborn where the Band of Brothers was stationed before the D-Day landing in 1944. And this is where 2nd Battalion's command center was. So we're kind of just right across from the Aldeborn Square. I was turning around and I was looking for this and I couldn't find it. And there it was right in front of me. I think it was meant to be. I think I was drawn here. It was meant to be. So here we go. Old Manor, 2nd Battalion, command post for Easy I'll Company. I'll tell you all shot. There's nothing less than an act of mutiny while we prepare for the goddamn invasion of Europe. Sergeant Harris. Sir. Turn in your stripes, collect your gear. You are hereby transferred out of my regiment. Sir. Get out. Sergeant Ranny. Sir. You consider yourself lucky I'm only busting you to private. All of you NCOs have disgraced the 101st Airborne. You can consider yourself lucky that we are on the eve of the largest action in the history of warfare, which leaves me no choice. So we're going to walk up to the St. Michael Church because my video is really going to center on Dick Winters and his experience here while they were here um, from September of 1943 to 1944 before they made their jump um, on D-Day. They were here in England and they came here to practice and to get closer to the front Today we talked about magnetic declination and the left add right subtract rule. Today we're going to put it into practice. And they pretty much like overtook the city and it was just very much where they were based out of and where they were stationed out of. You know, it's a good thing we weren't gambling, oh, right? Oh, boy, you know we would've gotten killed. You want to bet? What? You want to bet? No, yeah, I just smoke. Oh, gambling, Come on, I don't know the game. I, oh, I don't really know much about it. Gambling, Packers yeah. Packers yeah. Come on. First one to hit the bullseye? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, one shot, one shot. One shot. Yeah, why not? Yeah? You make it two. Two packs. Two packs. Two packs. Two packs. Two packs. Two packs. All right, two packs. Here we go. Here we go. One shot. And you're going to shoot lefty all night? Hey, come on. Just curious, because he's right-handed. George. What would I do without George Luz? Boop! Oh! Goodness gracious. Two, Two packs, boy. gentlemen. I know you got him. stationed here. They had been to Camp Tortuga, they had gone through jump training, and then they came here. And they took uh, a ship over from New York Harbor here. And Dick Winters just has this quote that he was looking at the Statue of Liberty before leaving the harbor heading to England. And he wondered if he'd ever see the Statue of Liberty again. You know, so much uncertainty of what they were doing and where they were going and what this was all about. So here he finds himself here they get to Aldeborn about September 15th, 1943, and they're here until March of 1944. And he says it's the most formative and developmental time in his career. First Lieutenant Harry Welsh, right above the cafe, not far from the Crown. And I believe this is the Bell Inn, 
right here used for the enlisted quarters. It says it's now back to a private residence, but I'm pretty, sh pretty sure this was where the Bell Inn was, right here. So right next door, the Bell Inn. with thatched roofs I'm walking by. It's like out of a fairy tale. But look at how pretty that looks right there with the thatched roofs. It's beautiful. I'm walking up to St. Michael Parish and you can see it was basically like a straight shot from the Crown Bar up here. I found where they had their huts set up. So Southward Lane and Farm Lane southward lane and farm lane. This is where the corrugated metal huts were that the men lived in and they actually had a dig. They found some old parachute material, but they actually found it. So these were, I think they call it the Nissen huts and then the, the Nissen huts. Again, made with the corrugated metal and there's pictures of this. And I think like the first aid hut was over here and you have Easy Company lining up right over here. And I'm standing there here. I'm standing where Easy Company was. So cool. Like I said, we'll mark this on, the, on one of our guides because I just kind of stumbled upon it. I knew it was on Farm Lane Road and I just took Farm Lane Road to the very end to where it met up with Southward Lane and this is where it was. And this is the church that Dick Winters, his very first week here, he wants to go to church. He wants to kind of center himself a little. And he walks up to this parish and attends the service. But he says that he doesn't even remember. He doesn't even remember what it was about but because he was just kind of lost in thought. And then he goes out into the graveyard here in the center of Aldeborn is a little monument and then you have St. Michael's Parish and then you have the blue boar right here. So this is the bar where all of the officers would congregate at. You can imagine Dick Winters walked up here and then went to church. And then when he was done with church, came out here and decided to sit in the graveyard and just think about what light ahead. You know, a lot was on his shoulders. A lot of unknown was about to happen. The men were really gonna be tested and he knew it. And Dick Winters really resonates with me a lot because I was an officer in the Navy and I know what that feels like to have a lot of responsibility, have a lot of people looking at you, expecting leadership from you, expecting you to be unapologetically ready to make decisions and do it with everyone's best interests in mind, including the mission. <laughs> the family that took him in was the Barnes family. And here is the grave of Corporal L.J. Barnes, Royal Air Force, the 12th of June, 1942, age 26. They were tending to this grave, this grave, when Winters, who was sitting on that bench, saw them tending to this grave. And went over and spoke with them and started up a conversation and a friendship. And they offered for him to come live with him for those months before Normandy. And it meant so much to Dick Winters 
and he says it's the most formative and developmental time in his career. And he attributes that to the Barnes family because when they took him in, he got to be a part of their family. He got to watch the news with them and have tea with them. He got to be away from all the other officers and just have some normalcy. And I think what happens in that moment as an officer and as somebody who leadership is you are very much building the foundation of what you're fighting for. And the magic of ordinary days, the magic of the ordinary normalcy of lives, of people's lives that you are fighting for, that they can have the safety to live their normal lives and to be immersed in that normalcy while learning and preparing for war. I can see how it could be the most formative and de developmental time for him. I mean, he really said to see them grieving their son, he understood when someone in his company died and writing those letters, what that family was going to experience. And I am just very inspired by Dick Winters. And that's why I'm here today. This was important for me to be here. And I love telling the story to you. Francis Charles Barnes and his wife, L O. U, I, E, Louis? I think it says Louis May Barnes. But this is the Barnes couple that were tending the grave of their son, who you see is right there, like the military, white grave. They were tending the grave. And right there's the bench. Because of who the Barnes family were and what they meant to Easy Company and to Dick Winters and just being that foundation for him. I'm gonna leave an American flag for them. I'm thankful for people like the Barnes family for what they did for Americans who were over here fighting for freedom and a way of life. And I'm honored to represent America today and leave this flag for the Barnes family. Do you remember the letter that my granny wrote me? You do. Do you remember how I ended it? I cherish the memories of a question my grandson asked me the other day when he said, Grandpa, were you a hero in the war? Grandpa said no. I served in the company up here. So as I leave St. Michael's, I'm just reminded of how much war touches everybody, right? And how much the Barnes family meant to Dick Winters and how much their loss, even through their loss, they were able to help another serviceman. And I don't even know if they knew the magnitude of how much they helped him become a better leader and lead his company through some of the most horrific encounters they were going to experience in World War II. It's just amazing that you never know how many people you touch and what lives you touch, and you just never know what impact you're going to have on a person's life. So I hope you learned something about Band of Brothers today. I hope you watched the show. I hope you... This was in the book. This, this Dick Winters talks about in the book. It doesn't... It didn't quite make the show, but I hope you will think about this when you think about what you can do to help people who are in that situation and helping those in need. So thank you. It was an honor to bring this to my viewers. It was an honor to be here today. It was an honor to bring this to you. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any suggestions, let me know. Like, subscribe. We will bring more content like this. And uh, on to my next Walk of History.